In this video, I'll be answering the question you see on the screen here from paper 33 from the year 2024 Cambridge A-level exams. If you're looking for a different question from this paper, there should be a link to a playlist in the description below. And if you're looking for a different paper, have a look around on my channel. I'll be doing all this on a whiteboard, hopefully just like you're used to your teacher doing. But remember, we're not in a classroom, so take advantage of YouTube, pause, rewind, whatever helps you out. Uh, if you find this or any of my videos useful, I would greatly appreciate a like, a subscribe, or even a share. For part A, question seven, they start us off by asking us to show that x plus seven is a factor of this. That's x plus seven. Now we can do that uh, two ways. The second way to do that is what I'm gonna do in part B anyway. So let me show you the other way in part A. The other way to say, it, it, if this is a factor, that means x equals minus seven is a root. And that means when we put minus seven into this, we should find zero. So that's all we do. The examiner won't let you do it in, the, in your uh, uh, calculator. Obviously, we can't just put it in and say, yeah, it equals zero. So you just have to show them that you're putting it in. Uh, something like this, I believe, is enough. But I suppose you could go to the trouble of multiplying each of the terms out separately on your calculator, but just show that this equals zero. Um, I Did I go to the trouble of doing I did, here we go. Uh, minus 2744 with this one. Um, I think this would be enough, putting equal zero here would be enough to give you full marks. But just to be, just to be sure, um, this line would definitely be enough. Now, another way to do part A is also the answer for part B. In part B, they ask us to find the quotient of fx. This is fx up here. The quotient of fx when it's divided by x plus 7. That means when this is divided by x plus 7, the answer is the quotient. That's a fancy way to say, the, to say um, this divided by x plus 7. So really, we need to divide this by x plus 7. So how do we do that? x plus 7 by long division is a uh, there's probably other ways to do it um, but this is the the way I do it and this is also the answer to part A because if this divides in evenly with no remainders it must have been a, a factor of, of fx okay how do we divide it in x goes into 8x cubed how many times what do we have to multiply x by to get this we'd have to multiply by 8 and x squared to get that. Then we multiply this 8x squared by both of these and see what the remainder is. So multiply it by this, we hopefully get the same thing. And um, 7 times 8, we get 56x squared. There's going to be a remainder, there's a difference here. If we take these away from each, each of them, we get minus 2x squared. Didn't go in evenly. Let's take down the next term. How many times does x plus 7 go into this? Well, the x goes into this minus 2x times. And again, multiply it back across, minus 2x squared, uh, minus 14x. Is it, what's the remainder here? We take them away and we find minus 3x, take down to minus 21. How many times does this go into this? And actually goes in evenly, it goes in minus 3 times. Just to double check that, minus 3 back is, minus 3 multiplied by x, minus 3x, minus 3 by 7 is minus 21 goes in evenly. That proves part A, but it also uh, is the answer for part B. For part C, uh, they want us to hence solve this other equation with loads of cosines. I won't bother writing it out at the moment, um, but hopefully you notice that that equation with all the cosines is the same as this. It's 8 cosine cubed. It's 54 cosine squared. We're using the same equation. So the answer we're going to use is um, to, to help us answer part C, we're going to factorize this equation. And we've done nearly all the work. We have x plus 7 as one of the answers. We have this. It, but I'd like to factorize this quadratic first. Uh, save me writing all the cosines. I'll do it when they're still x's. So 8x squared minus 2x minus 3. And check if it factorizes. Maybe it doesn't. Um, but check if it factorizes. Two numbers to multiply to get 3. There's only one choice for that, 3 and 1. So what I multiply is to get eight. Um, eight and one, or two and four. So we need a combination of them that will work to get uh, two x. So it is, uh, oh, I better check my notes. <laughs> it is two and four. It is two times three would get six. 
and four times one would get uh, four, six minus four is two, or in this case, it would be minus six plus, um, minus six plus four gets minus two. So these are the factors um, of, of this, and all three factors are uh, these two and x plus seven. So with that information, well, let me clear off the board and I'll rewrite part C with all the cosines. So here's what they actually give us in part C. They give us this equation here. We need to notice that's the same as up there. And then from our previous work, we need to know the factors of this is x plus seven, four uh, x minus three, and two x plus one. Um, using this information with cosines, just replace all the x's with cosine theta. We would get uh, cosine theta plus seven, cosine, uh, sorry, four cosine theta minus three, a two cosine theta plus one. These all multiplied together must equal zero because these are identical. So the factors of this should be the same as this. And when they equal zero, that means one of these factors, at least one of them, uh, must equal zero. So let's see which it is. Is it this guy? Is cosine theta equal minus seven? Is that a possibility? Something wrong with that. Uh, here's cosine, uh, let's see, something like that. Cosine only goes as high as one and as low as minus one. So it can never actually equal seven. This cannot be correct. That's not a correct one. What about the next one? Uh, this would tell me cosine theta is equal three over four. That could work, uh, three over four would get lots of answers. Um, and this one here would be cosine theta is equal minus one over two. Again, that'd work, I get lots of answers in here. And uh, looking back at the question, they do tell us that, sorry, this line here, they do tell us the answer has to be uh, bigger than zero and less than 360. So we're in degrees actually, not, um, uh, not radians. Okay, so what are the answers? Uh, we just saw this, uh, theta is equal the inverse cosine of three over four. And the calculator would tell us that um, that that is equal to 41.4. But remember, that only tells us this answer here. The calculator only tells us this area. And uh, we still want this one. So if that was 41.4 away from zero, it must be 41.4 less than 360. So 360 minus 41.4 is a 318.6. Uh, That's a, another perfectly good answer. Um, and we also get two answers from this. Theta is equal the inverse cosine of minus a half. Uh, put that into a calculator and we get 120. Uh, first answer the calculator gives is this one here. Um, but th if this is 120 away from zero, it's also 120 less than 360, which is uh, 240. And this is the other answer. Uh, every other answer is outside the range. Everything out there is outside the range. Everything below zero is outside the range. There's your four answers, um, all in degrees. Okay, hopefully that answered um, all of question seven. If you have any follow-up questions, let me know in the comments. I'll do my best to get back to you. Thanks for watching, have a great day.